Hey guys, it is Raquel Goldie here at The Ripple Effect, and I am here with Miyagi Von Singleton. Did I say it right? You did say it correctly. Where did this name come from? I have to know. Well, if I must start, my first, my first initial name was Miyagi. Okay. I got it my junior year in college, and it came from being... It was a lifestyle thing. It's, it's always being on and never off. You know, I was striving to be better in my everyday life. So I was like, why be off when I can be on at all times? So I stuck Words, with it. the words of advice. Yeah, and I took it from Miyagi, you know, wax on, wax off. From Mr. Miyagi, that's what I was, that's okay. Absolutely. So it's like, why be off when you can be on? You know, it's like, it's a, it's a play on the words. And... You know, my name is Jeremy Trayvon Singleton, for those who don't know. So the Vaughn Singleton came from my middle name and my last name. So I'm trying to find a way to to melting pots, all of it, you know. It, I feel it, like I'm in like a great yoga session right now or something. I'm, I'm all about the zen. Listen, if the vibes aren't good, they're bad. And we don't want bad vibes, especially, especially in this interview, especially at the Rebel Fact, right? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I love it. All right, so I have to ask because we are at the Ripple Effect. Finally, the day has finally came, and we are at Revolution Live, and so many amazing artists. I know I grew up down here. Did you grow up down here? You did? I did not grow up down here. I was born in Sarasota, Florida, and then I moved to Orlando when I was like six, seven years old, and um, I've been in the Central Florida area basically since I was like seven years old okay but you know about this venue and how everyone who has been here and you just performed on that stage where all these crazy amazing people and I love how at this venue they have like all the pictures on the walls and all the posters taped everywhere so you're like holy bleep yes, I can't believe that we are here this is happening you being a performer you're on that stage I'm in this green room where we're doing this interview where everyone has literally been like this is it so has it been like a surreal moment a surreal day very surreal. I can't even describe how it was to, to be on stage in the midst of all of that. You know, it was it was a surreal moment. I mean, you basically took the words out of my mouth. I feel like it was one of those moments where it's like, you know, while you're spitting the lyrics and going going through the song, you're like, I can't believe I'm like really here. You like look out into the audience, you're like, wow. And there's a good audience Absolutely. here too. Yeah, because I, I actually um performed here. I was on somebody else's set. His name is GT. And um, I was on his set on September 7th. Wow. And um, I got a chance to perform one of my singles. That was the warm up. Yes, ma'am. And now this one is like the grand finale. And I felt it. And I felt the reception from the crowd. And I was able to get a couple of friends to come out. And, you know, it's just, it's just good to feel like you're going in the right direction. Right. I feel like it's the grand finale, but it's kind of kicking off your 2019. So you can only go from here, really. Yes, so, <laughs> bouncing off of that, <laughs> see what I did there. So what have you got going on for 2019? Because I did some research, and I know your single came out in November. So what is kind of going on from that release? Well, now that I've released something in November, um, you know, my, my manager, Tyler Law, He's also an artist, but he's kind of in between artistry and management, but he's my manager. You know, he's been pushing me to, to put out more stuff. So now that I've concluded this show, I think the next step for me is to put out a small EP. And obviously from my set list, you saw that I like to rap and I like to sing. I like to do a little bit of everything. So I'm thinking I'm going to do a four for four. Yes, ma'am. So I'm thinking I'm going to do four songs where it's more of like an alternative singing vibe. And then the other four are going to be hardcore lyrics. You know. So. Love it. I love it. All right. So have you started that process yet? or? I've got, I've got songs in the vault. It's just a matter of if I'm going to decide on those songs or if I'm going to say, you know what? I'm feeling spontaneous. Let me make something new. Yeah. You know, because I mean... I mean, pretty much every day I have the same routine. I come home from work around noon. I get home at 12.30. I get on the computer and I make something. Mm -hmm. and even if it's like a hook, right. I'll make something. Or if it's a verse that I have in mind, I'll make it. I'll lay it down just for the sake of being able to hear it back and say, you know what? I got an idea. Let me come back to it. Mm -hmm. You know, because at one point I didn't have any of the equipment to be right. able to lay anything down. So I feel like now I'm I'm pretty fortunate to be able to say like I have something to be able to lay down. So if I have something, I have a canvas, if it's a hook, if it's eight words or four stanzas or whatever you want to call it, 
I have something to put down, so it's like I can always come back to it and make something. Are you that person who has a ton of random like voice notes on your phone and regular notes just from like, oh, this would be something good Absolutely. to put in something? Yeah. Yeah, I have the voice memos and I also have notes. Yeah. Like I'll like I'll be at work or wherever. If it's just a random moment, I'll type something down where I'm thinking of like a cadence or a hook. Or if it's a verse, and I'll just type it down. If it's four bars or eight bars or even 12 bars, I'll type it down on my phone. And then as soon as I come home, if I can kind of associate it to a beat that's kind of my style, then I'll lay it down. Okay, so that's your creative process. You come up with the, the verbiage first, and then have you? do you ever switch, like come up with the beat or whatever first, or not really? Sometimes, it, I say more so it's on the other side of things. Like I'll have the verbiage first, and then I'll kind of find a beat that works for the verbiage I have. But sometimes it's like that. Sometimes I'll have the, you know, I'll have the beat, and then I'll like create the verbiage. But more that's cool. I would say it's it's the verbiage first and then the beat. I always think the creative process is so interesting to ask an artist because it's different for everybody, and some people can only you know write or something comes to them in the bathtub. Like I've had friends who've been like, yeah, I literally sit in the bathtub with it off and just feed up, and it comes. Like it's different for everybody, and I think that's so interesting. And I think talking to different all the different artists today to at the ripple effect has been a very interesting learning process too because you learn how people's brains work and I think that's what up-and-coming artists and viewers who watch these interviews want to know they want to get to know the artist even more on a on a different level so who are your who's your number one person you want to collaborate with if not one we'll do a couple okay I, I gotta do a couple because I feel like I'm in the midst of not just wanting to go one direction you know I have like an alternative lyricism vibe in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So if I had to say two people that would be on the rap side of things, I would say Kendrick and Jay-Z. Jay-Z, I mean, come on. Yeah, it's Jay-Z, I mean, <laughs> for goodness sakes. Yeah. And then if it had to be on more of a like a alternative, like how the sound sounds type of vibe, it would be a, a Travis Scott and then maybe a Six Lack. I call him Six Lack. You know, but I mean, his name is Black, but I call him Six Black. But I mean, I feel like those two, as far as like my my like my more sing songy vibe, I feel like that's more who of like, not that I sound like, but kind of who I relate to. Mm -hmm. Your inspiration, right? Yeah, as far as lyrics go, as far as like how it sounds, as far as when I listen to it, just being like, yes, like yeah. this is more of like when I what I want to kind of go for, but obviously in my own way, mm -hmm. so. Love it. I love a very good top four. So definitely, I'm glad we didn't narrow it down to just one. All right. So where can we find your music? You know, Ripple Effect, all about so showcasing sh words, showcasing our artists here. It's been a, it's been a long day. Um, where where can we find you? Plug yourself in. Go for it. I am on Apple Music. I'm on Spotify. You can find me at Vaughn Singleton. That's V A U G H N Singleton. That's S I N G. L-E-E-T-O-N, okay? I'm also on Instagram. That's at 23Miyagi, but those are the Roman numerals. So that's X-X-I-I-I-Miyagi, M-I-Y-A-G-I. -I -I -I. Bam, that's it. Look them up, follow them, and of course, don't forget to follow Ripple Effect and myself, Raquel Goldie. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.